Hey everyone, Gavin Victor here. Today I'm going to talk about who I believe is the most important philosopher you've never heard of, Samuel Pufendorf. Um, what he did is he complicated the paradigm of the Western canon and expanded what it meant to do philosophy. So in this class we have looked at Descartes' tree. Um, you start with metaphysics, it branches out into physics, or, or the, sorry, um, the roots are metaphysics, the trunk is physics, and then the branches are morals, medicine, and mechanics. Descartes wanted a very sound philosophical tree, obviously based in metaphysics, but that is not the only way that philosophy can start, according to at least Pufendorf and a lot of philosophers after him. So Pufendorf decided to cultivate his own method, and this method was largely influential for those coming later in the canon, and um, I think the just the contemporary uh, modern and postmodern philosophical tradition more generally. So um, before we get to exactly how he changed um, the methodology of philosophy, I'm going to talk about some biographical information, I'm going to go over his works and his main themes, um, and then tie it all together looking back at these trees. He was born in 1632 in Dorfchemnitz, Saxony, where now we would call Germany. He was born during the Thirty Years' War, uh, meaning that the area he was in was uh, surrounded by violence. The war came to villages uh, peripheral to his, and eventually, well, when he was seven, actually, he had to evacuate his village uh, to get somewhere safer. His father was a Lutheran pastor. This was really important for his philosophy, as was uh, this war-torn youth. But his father being a Lutheran pastor is what brought him to university. He went to a university to study theology and decided to switch to philosophy. Uh, after university, after graduating in philosophy, he becomes a tutor for the family of the Danish ambassador to Sweden. Um, unfortunately, by a, bad stro a stroke of bad luck, a war broke out between Denmark and Sweden, and the uh, ambassador was imprisoned, and Pufendorf was imprisoned with them, um, with that family. It was, it was in, it was while he was imprisoned that he wrote his first work, which is quite interesting. Um, and after he's released, he becomes a professor, a jurist, and a historiographer, or a historian. And he was made a baron, a very high honor, in the last year of his life. He wasn't incredibly well connected while he was alive, but his work for, the, for about a century after his death would have been on every major syllabus in, in law and natural law, um, you know, in Europe. So, yeah, quite inf influential for a short period of time after his death. And, and the interesting thing is in that period of time is when all of the philosophers, well, most of the philosophers that were really influential to the Western canon um, came about. So first he wrote two books on the elements of universal jurisprudence, an early moral and natural law theory work written while he was in, uh, while he was imprisoned. Then he wrote The Present State of Germ Germany. This was a political work, um, a critique written under a pseudonym, which is quite interesting. He then wrote his most famous work of the law of nature and nations, from which he published an excerpt that's also very popular called The Whole Duty of Man According to the Law of Nature. 
After that, he switched more into uh, religious studies and published of the nature and qualification of religion in reference to civil society. So this is how does religion relate to politics, to social life, things like this. Finally, his, his last major work was Law of Diplomacy or Agreement and Disagreement of Protestants. This is um, looking at relations, religious relations. Um, and he was working on this up until his death, and it was published posthumously. So what he was tending to get at in all of these texts um, was a new view of natural law. Natural law had been rooted in theology before him. Um, Aquinas, Aquinas was a major natural law theorist and also a major um, Catholic theological thinker. And, and the, the concept was God has made natural laws. The Bible shows natural laws, uh, laws as to how we should act. Therefore, we must act that way. And Pufendorf wanted to complicate that view. He said, I think that we can arrive at natural laws, laws as to how things are and should be in the ethical world. But Pufendorf thought that we could arrive at those laws through study of anthropology or social science. If we do science about how humans live on their day-to-day -day lives, we just look at the sociality of humans, we can figure out you know, what is constant across cultures, what is constant across people, and we can understand the laws of our natural, uh, of our social lives. Broadly, Pufendorf's work falls into the ethical school of voluntarism, which is the belief that laws exist, ethical laws exist, but humans choose to either act in line or out of line with such laws. So, in order to act in line with such laws, Pufendorf creates the conceptual categories of moral entities. So natural laws exist, but moral entities are contingent fabrications that are useful for understanding how we can act in the context of natural laws. There are four types, states, states or conditions, that's one type. There are substances, there are moral qualities, and there are moral quantities. And so if we understand how all of these uh, interact in a given situation, we will understand how best we can uh, you know, operate within the natural law and, and act ethically. So the methodology um, is well summed up in the preface to his first work um, by the editor, who says, He divided such action according to its objects, principles, affections, and effects, and thus developed a view of the moral world, moral world as a hierarchically arranged tree of definitions that embrace the central legal concepts in an allegedly self-contained and complete system. So here we have another tree analogy, um, and we'll get back to that. But we see a very methodological view of doing essentially a, a proto-scientific, um, depending on what your view of science is, proto-scientific ethics. And interestingly, his political theory was simply an extension of his ethical theory. He believed that as humans can't live alone, it's a natural law that we must live in community. Uh, when we create this society, there's a best way to do it, and there's a best way for people to interact with each other, and therefore political, political realities are simply um, a human social reality. So his political theory is simply an extension of his moral theory, which is quite interesting. Um, actually, the, the government or the sovereign or the state is considered to be a moral entity, just like a human or a person would be a moral entity, um, which is quite interesting. 
and he he's he's known as an architect of modern liberalism. Um, he was you know formative for the Western political model uh, on on points like social contract theory, natural rights, uh, self preservation, self determination, all these central tenets of what we know to be uh, the Western political model. Okay, so back to the trees. We are familiar with Descartes' philosophical tree. Roots, metaphysics, trunk, physics, branches, moral systems, medicine, and mechanics. Puffendorf might have, Puffendorf might have kind of faded away, but he did something really interesting to this view of the philosophical tree. He planted his own and looked at it in a kind of topsy-turvy way. So we can actually think of the tree backwards. So in instead of, you know, the kind of fruits being the end of the, ph the, the philosophical expedition, as Descartes did, we can think of the roots being the grounding of our philosophical thinking into actual reality. So Pufendorf wants us to look at the social nature of humans as if they are leaves on, you know, twigs and then on branches and then on arms and then connecting in a specific way to the trunk. If we do such correctly, we have a scientific understanding of how humans relate and through that understanding we can correctly root our lives in the natural laws. And so this is this is revolutionary revolutionary as far as no longer rooting everything in metaphysics or previously especially for natural law philosophers theology. This is a scientific method to understand how best humans interact and um, basing an eth ethical theory based off that. It's secular, mostly. Um, it focuses on duty, which is going to be a huge thing um, coming into um, Kant. And the social lens is also going to be really important for thinkers like Hume. Uh, we already read how Hume wanted to say as much as we are rational creatures, we are social creatures. And Pufendorf was a massive influence on the Western philosophical canon as far as can we stray from a strict metaphysical grant, grounding of our philosophical beliefs and instead focus on humans at the level of humanity and do philosophy from that perspective. So thank you all for, for listening and watching. I'd be happy to talk with anyone um, if this presentation or this thinker might work well in your final essay. Feel free to email me, victorgj at whitman.edu. I'd be happy to set up a time and talk more about Pufendorf. Hope you all enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.